Hey there, Droya here, and welcome to this tutorial where I shall be showing you how to set up and launch IVAO for your Microsoft Flight Simulator. So we'll cover the creation of an account, the installation process for the altitude clients, filing a flight plan, and filing your initial flight plan, your initial clearance, to your destination airports. And so as you see right now, we're currently at Vienna. We have plenty of traffic right now, which is controlled by real people who are flying within Microsoft Flight Simulator or other sims that support um, IVAO. And so the purpose of the tutorial is showing you how to get into the network and how to take your first steps in the network that's used by so many. The first thing you want to do is create an account on IVAO. This is a simple process and can be done on their website, IVAO.aero. And so what you want to do is head over to the top of the screen, click on Register. Read the important information before you create an account. And once you've understood it, click on continue. Here, you'll then plug in your first name, your last name, your email address, your date of birth, and the language that you speak. Next, we come up to division. And so, depending where in the world you are, depends on what kind of ATC training you'll get, as well as different facts and events that you may get yourself involved in as well. So, as I'm based in London, I can either get a choice of the United Kingdom, or the United Kingdom and Ireland MCD. And so, depending where in the world you are, select where you are located, and after that, you get a choice of registering as a pilot, as an air traffic controller, or both. So if you ever decide to take the plunge and start controlling aircraft within certain airspaces, you can leave that on. Or if you don't fancy going ATC and just want to stick to being a pilot, you can turn it off and continue without that. Next, you can select how you've heard about the organisation. In this case, you're probably going to select YouTube for that, but depending on where you've heard it, you can then select it through that. Finally, you can either confirm that you're 16 years old or between 13 and 16, compared to you have your parents authority to join a network, accept the rules, accept the privacy policy, you can also click on each link to make sure that you've read and understood these, and once you're happy with that, confirm you're not a robot, and you can register. Now you may be wondering, hold up a minute, where did I insert my password? Don't be alarmed, that's standard procedure, and so what you'll do is when you create an account, you'll get an email from mail at iva.aero, and what it does, it provides you with an member VID, which is your username, an IVAN password, which acts as the password for the clients for the simulator, and a website password, which is logged into the website, which is logged into the forums, and gives you the browser side of the IVO network. And so, for creating an account and for flying in your first Microsoft Flight Simulator flights, the member ID and the IVAN passwords are the two important ones to remember, and so it's well worth jotting those down as well. After creating an account and confirming your email address, what you'll then want to do is download the pilot's client. And so, in this case, we'll be using Altitude, the newest client of IVAO, and also now features the built-in voice codec as well. So, before, IVAO required you to install TeamSpeak alongside of it, and then it piggybacks the voices over TeamSpeak, but this is no longer a requirement. So if you head over to the IVAO.aero Altitude client page, if you scroll down, what you'll then want to do is head over to the Altitude Downloads and select Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. You can install the voice clients, select a mirror, which is closest to you in this case in the UK, it will probably be the Netherlands. Click on Download, and in a couple of seconds it will ask you to in download the installer for the client. With the installer now downloaded, you can open it and go through the process. Click on Next. Read the end user license agreement, make sure you're happy with what it says. Click on the agree, and now go through the installation location. So in my case, I've got Microsoft Flight Sim installed to C Games Microsoft Flight Simulator. So use the browse folder directory to find your simulator. In my case, it's C Games Microsoft Flight Simulator. Click on OK, click on Next. And what you want to do is download both the core components and the Metal library. And so what Metal is, is the series of AI models that the simulator will use to model match your AI traffic. So if that person is flying a Ryanair 737-800, the simulator will display it as a Ryanair 737-800, despite the fact that natively the sim doesn't have a 737 model, but IVAO will install one into the simulator for use. And so select both of those, and then click on install. It will take a couple of moments to go through the installation process, so you've got to install both the program, and then afterwards you've got to install the metal package, but once you've got both of those installed, you're very nearly there the entire installation process of Microsoft Flight Simulator IVAO.
And with that, you are now ready to launch Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'll also create the desktop shortcut so that way you can find the UI and the core easier. And so I'll explain what these are in a bit more detail when you load the simulator up. It's one thing having IVO installed, it's another thing using it to its maximum potential. And so what you want to do is find out where the controllers are and where the real world planes are as well. And so this can be done via the IVO WebEye, which acts like a Flight Radar 24, but for IVAO pilots. And so each red airplane you see on the screen right now is a real person somewhere in the world flying a Microsoft Flight Simulator, FSX, P3D, X-11, or even FS2004, which is compatible. And so as you can see right now, there are 878 active pilots right now somewhere on this map. If we zoom into Europe, you can now see, for example, we have a lot of these blue zones, a lot of these patched areas. And so these are right now the active controllers. And so these are real people managing communications between the aircraft on the ground and guiding the aircraft from their departure to their destination. Different colors have different meanings. So for example, if you zoom into Warsaw, which is very active right now, you can see, first of all, we have a shade of light blue. And so this manages the sensors. And so this is that aircraft that cruise right now traveling to and from their arrival to destination and having very little communication in regards to where they are right now. The darker blue means the approach, and so this is for low altitude aircraft coming towards or going away from the airport, either descending or in their climb out, and so approach will guide aircraft from their final waypoints to the runways. Zooming further still, you can see a red zone, and so this is the mark of a tower, and so this is a person who's controlling aircraft on the runway, as well as on their initial climb out or their very final approach and giving them the clearances they need to depart or land. And one more, we have yellow and this is the mark of ground. And so this is for aircraft that are not on the runway and so either on taxiway or at the gate. And they'll be dealing with communications such as clearance, such as taxi to and from the runway. And likewise, sometimes as well, you may get a clearance control as well, but these aren't too common depending on where in the world you are. And so if you're flying with a active ATC, it always works with a top-down, so you have centre, who's the master of everything, and therefore if there's no tower, there's no approach, no ground, no clearance, you'll do everything with centre. Then you have approach, you'll then manage the approach, the tower, the ground, the clearance. Then you have the tower, which manages tower, ground, clearance. Ground, who then manages ground and clearance, and then sense clearance, which just manages clearance on their own. And so depending on who's active, you get to tune different frequencies to see who's doing what. And so right now you can see there's 139 active controllers and you see their 24 hour peak, which is still rather high. And so IVO certainly has been more active than ever recently and has seen a massive boost thanks to recent Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you plan to fly an IFR scheduled flight, then don't forget to also set up a flight plan, which can be found on the IVAL flight plan system on fpl.ivo.aero. And so there are two ways of doing this. The first thing is click on fly the flight plan and fill in your information manually. And so in this case, you'll be setting your identification for your call sign, the type of aircraft you're flying, so the ISCAL code of your aircraft, the equipment you have on board, your departure code, your time, your cruising speed in knots or Mac, your flight level, your routing, your destination airports, total airtime, alternative airports, and other information remarks you may need, including departure dates of flights and time of flights, your endurance, and the amount of people on board your aircraft. And so you can fill that in all manually, or the easy way of doing it is by using SimBrief. And so I've covered the tutorial on how to use SimBrief, which you can click on the top right corner to find. And so what you want to do is scroll down to the bottom of the page and you've created your flight plan, and just click on the IVA button, click on Prefile, and just like that, it fills everything for you. So go through it, confirm you're happy, and then click Submit, as soon as you're happy. And so you see now that our flight plan has been set and being highlighted in the green, and therefore this is our active flight plan for our flights. Once you have installed IVAL, checked the map, fired your flight plan and loaded the simulator, you are now ready to launch your program and get yourself ready to fly. And so there are two programs that need to run, the IVAL Pilot Core and the IVAL Pilot Clients. So the first thing you want to do is run the core. This acts like a bridge between the simulator and IVAL, and so what it does is it injects the AI model aircraft into the simulator, while also extracting data from the sim to showcase to other IVAL users as well. And so this is what is used to see other planes, as well as communicate with ATC as well. And so this doesn't do anything, you run it, 
it pops up for a fraction of a second and then it hides in the taskbar. Next, you want to go to the iVal Pilots clients and then run that. And so what this does is it opens up the main Altitude clients and this is what you use to contact the ATC as well as connect to the platform and manage everything directly within the simulator. To connect to IVAO, all you have to do is click on the red offline button. And that will pop up the Connect to Network menu. So this way you plug in your call sign, your username and password, your name, your server connection and all the other stuff for your flight as well. So starting off flying Wizz 28903. So plug in your call sign for that. And now remember the email gave you your ID and your password. This way you paste it into. So copy your member VID and paste it to VID. And then copy the IVAN password. Not the website, but the IVAN password, and paste that into password. Then plug in your real name, and then select a service it connects to. So it doesn't matter which one you connect to, since it all connects to the same IVO cloud server as a whole, but the ones with the lowest loads, and therefore has the least people connected to it, it's generally a lot, bit easier to run, less latency, and so well worth selecting the lowest number of the list. Then we select the voice, and so if this is your very first time in IVAO, your very first time with Realistic ATC, I'd highly recommend you select no voice and just communicate with text. So connect to the network and then do nothing about 30 minutes an hour and just listen. Listen to how other people speak, listen to how controllers deal with situations, read the chat as well and watch everything happen around you and kind of get a feel for what the network will be like. It may be daunting at first, but the more you practice and we get used to it, the more rewarding it becomes flying with realistic ATC within Microsoft Flight Simulator. And so, like I say, it may be daunting at first, but give it time, give it practice, and eventually you'll become a master of that. Eventually, when you're ready to start introducing voice into your network, go with receive only. So, ATC will talk to you, but you reply back with text only. And then once you're fully happy, once you think you're ready to go, take the plunge into the full, ATC communication, switch to text and receive. So talk and receive allows you to talk to ATC and they reply back to you with voice as well. And so the busier the airport, the more daunting again this can be. But again, more practice, the better you eventually become. Now we come to the metal aircraft and variants, and this way selects the type of aircraft you're flying. So today we're flying an A320 Neo, although IVA itself doesn't specifically cater for Neos, in this case we're sticking A320 and flying with Wizz Air for deliveries. So IVA has pretty much every single airline, every single livery out there. And so today we're flying the Wizz Air with new colours and sharklets. So select that. Once you're happy with everything, connect to the network. You can now see your connectors to IVA Europe. And if you look at ATC menu, you can see they have got a Vienna approach, a Vienna tower, and a few other centers slowly building up as we connect in. So it's very busy today. Full ATC around. We can then click on the COM1 menu and tune. Let's go to Vienna Tower. And here you can then adjust the volumes and listen to people as they communicate. You also want to have a push talk key. And so if you go to settings, you can either disconnect from the center, set your audio inputs and outputs. Enable or disable the VHF effects. So if you can't understand the ATC and wants us to hear it a bit more clearer, you can disable those effects and hear them with just a clear standard voice and set up a push to talk. So you need that in order to actually communicate to the simulator because without it, your microphone stays silent the whole time. So click on set to push to talk key and I'd highly recommend using caps lock. It's not the most in tune key for this sort of stuff, but I was everything on the keyboard. Caps lock for me is the only thing I'm not using and therefore I just set it up as an easy way of communication. So set everything up, click on apply. Once you're happy, you can then start communicating with ATC. So right now you can see that's our call sign. That's our routing. Click on that. It shows your flight plan in detail. And what I will do is I'll wait for a gap in the communications and then we'll request an IFR clearance now to test on Niki, which is our destination. So you can't do the flight today, but again, to give you a better idea of what you need to say, what you need to do, 
and give you an idea of what happens when you're in the IVO network. There are plenty of resources online that teach you what to say and when to say it, but that's something we'll probably cover on a later date. For now, it's just a case of bringing you into the network and introducing you what you need to do. So, let's speak, shall we? If you push and hold the caps lock key, we'll then be in communication with ATC. So, wait for a gap, and then we shall speak. Hello there, Vienna Tower. This is Wizz Air 28903 requesting IFR clearance to Thessaloniki. Wizz Air 28903, good evening to you, sir. Uh, you are cleared to Thessaloniki via the ASBEEP 2 Charlie departure route, out of runway 29er. Initially climb 5,000 feet to Squawk 0476. Wizz Air 28399 is cleared to Thessaloniki via the Add it to Charlie departure for runway 29 and its initial climb 5,000 feet, squawking 0476 for Wizz Air 2893. Wizz Air 2893, correct. There you go, see so if I made a small error there. Tiny difference with the, uh, the departure SID. And so, even now, I've been using networks for a little while, but I make mistakes. A to Z will cater for it. If this is your first flight, you've never done it before, you make a small mistake. They generally quite cater for for these small little errors there, but it's a lot of fun, and the people are very kind to fly over as well, so with that, I bring this to an end. So I hope this tutorial helps you in learning how to set up and install IVA for your Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you're next to our left as well, it sounds like we've got an aircraft slowly coming to gates now. Now, guys, we have Lufthansa on the runway right now, just arriving on the taxiway. We have a loud motion to our right, and a field aircraft around as well. So these are all real people that are right now on the IVA network. Both this fly on their own course. And so, as I say, it's worth the plunge, worth doing. And if you want to fly with realistic AI traffic as well, it's one of the few ways that it can enable to do this with the Microsoft Flight Simulator. So, I hope you found this sure helpful in learning how to set up Microsoft. IVA for Microsoft Flight Simulator and learn the basics on how to get your flight plan filed and your clearance now to your destination airports. At some point we'll try and cover all the steps of the flight, so clearance, depart, taxi departure, cruise, descent and arrival. And so like I say, at some point we'll cover that in the future, but for now it's a case of introduce you to the network, learn the basics and then figure out where you're going from there. So I thank you very much for watching. Do leave a like if this video helps you do subscribe so if you haven't done so already. And I shall see you again in the very near future. Take care and goodbye.